eating out of a Hello Kitty microwave. Is she needing help? You can get your life back. I don't want my life back. Or craving attention. You see how everyone's taking care of you? How you're loving this? Now. You have verbally abused me. How dare you, Mom? How, how dare, dare you? The face-off with her family. You need to sit down and listen to your daughter. This child has been given everything by me. If you walk off this stage, our relationship is done. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. Yesterday we watched two sisters, Dana and Shamita, at odds over Shamita's constant need for attention. Why? Because she has been diagnosed with over 70 plus illnesses, takes over 20 something medications at the same time, and doesn't leave her bedroom for more than two hours a day because she says she is just too sick to deal with anything. Now she walked on stage slurring her words and accusing her sister of betrayal. It was so dramatic, we just ran out of time, but here's what happened yesterday. When I found out that I was ill, I felt like a failure. I just wished that I would die in my sleep so that I would not be a burden to my family anymore. My sister's illnesses are consuming our lives. It's destroying our family. We don't know what to do anymore. My sister is always pill popping. I'm so nervous. I need to take a Xanax really bad. People think I like this box. It's not a brag box. Is this your medication box? Yes, that's, that's my, that's what I live on. I take Xanax, Ambien, Adderall, Sulfamyth, Warfarin for the blood, Tramadol, Synthroid for my hypothyroidism, Linzus, Promethazine, B12 injections, Clobamazithine, Sulfacrate, Zolipidem, Alaprazum, Topramate, Vesicare, Emetiza, Lactalus, Cerexomine. You've got 72 diagnoses in the last 10 years. Do you think that you're
medicated to the point that it puts you in kind of a fuzzy zone? No. I'm, I'm not on but one antidepressant. Tamita, you're slurring your words. You sound medicated 24-7. Presently, I have five active doctors, but in the past 12 months, I've seen approximately 35 doctors. I go 18 days without going to the bathroom. I feel like I'm carrying two alien babies in my stomach. All my teeth are rotting. My organs are falling apart. She believes that you, you have some physical issues, but she says she feels like it's kind of taken you over and become your identity. She said, I almost feel like she wants cancer. I almost feels like she wants to be sick. My husband and I have always been very worried about Shamita's kids because they don't have a mom. I think my sister is severely miserable in her life. I've accepted I'm a disabled person. No one else has. What's the bottom line? This is not the time to mince words. What do you think's going on here? Everything is about her. It's always about you, and I can't take it anymore. Everything is you, you, you. Is she possibly right? Oh, you just pissed her off. Possibly right, right, right. That you are not as sick as you believe you are. Dr. Phil, I would love to not be sick. Why would I want to make these things up? I'm in horrible pain. Just shoot me now so I don't ruin the family. I, I ask you a very specific question, and you haven't answered me yet. My question for you is, is it possible that you have lost your identity as anything other than being a sick person? For myself, yes, I've lost my identity. I don't care about myself anymore. And really, I could, if I don't wake up, I don't wake up. I just don't feel like my family cares. Like they're just waiting to collect the insurance money when I die. Yeah. Oh my God, you mean if we didn't care? L listen, well, they, uh... When you're to told that there's several policies taken out, it just makes me feel like they're just waiting to come in the check, like, hurry up and die. <laughs> I'm tired of that. I, I don't even tell them anymore. I'm not going to tell y'all any... I don't want you to come to the hospital anymore. I don't want you... To, I'm not going to tell y'all anything about my house, so don't expect any updates. I'm just going to battle it alone. I'm fine. I'll battle it alone. Shamita, we've never wanted you to go through any of this alone. We just don't know what to do anymore. I hate what this has done to you, to our family. We want that vibrant Shamita from years ago. She is gone, and we want her back. But we don't know how to get it back. We're kids. just frustrated. Don't, we just don't, don't know understand what, what happened to me. We absolutely at college, understand. And you are not considering those factors that happened in my life. No one unless that happens to you can walk in my shoes. That is true. Well, let's take a break. Next, Shamita's daughter says her mom is a complete hypochondriac and she is so fed up with her that she refuses to live with her anymore. We'll meet her next. She says that, no, 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 she's just been alienated by Dana. We'll talk about that when we come back. While other moms are soccer moms, my mom is sleeping, sick, complaining. My mom said that she feels that she is dying. Not one doctor has said, Shamita, you're going to die. And later... Don't you dare say you have been there. I would we never are. do this. Mom! You. Stop! Talk you need to more. sit down and listen no. to your daughter. You can't even talk straight right now! I feel like a walking pharmacy. I take Xanax for anxiety, Ambien for sleep, Adderall, Sulfamyth, Trimeth, Warfarin for the blood, Tremadol 
Synthroid for my hypothyroidism, Linzus, Permethylene, B12 injections, Clobomethazine, <laughs> Sulfacrate, Zolopidem, Aloprazum, Topramate, Vesicare, Hematiza, Lactalus, Cerexomine, Peridium. I take that almost like candy. Well, Shamita's 18-year-old daughter, Sherea, admits she is furious about her mother's illnesses and moved out just three weeks before graduation because she just, quote, couldn't take it anymore. Take a look. While other moms are soccer moms, my mom is sleeping, sick, complaining, instead of just trying to be there for her kids. I feel like I really had to help raise myself and my brothers. My mom really thrives on the attention. She turns every conversation into her. It's not on right or something, but so stinking long. She has one to 2,000 friends on Facebook and they all know she is sick. The lady at the grocery store that checks us out knows my mom is sick. My mom said that she feels that she is dying. Not one doctor has said, Shamita, you're gonna die. Even at a young age, she would talk to me as though I was her best friend. I was six or seven when she shared intimate details about her affair. I reacted like, why are you telling me this? I should not know this. I was so confused. I have moved out of my parents' house twice. My mom was suffocating me. and She feels betrayed, especially because I moved into her sister's house. I know that my mom truly does love her kids, but I don't think she has the ability to truly take care of us the way a mom needs to. You, well, that's the love. Mom, I would not be here if I did not love you, so don't, no, don't dare come, say, don't, don't you dare don't say you. I don't love you. Don't you dare say that to How me. How many times did Dad and I say we were going to write Dr. Phil about you? And who's on Dr. Phil right now? And the verbal abuse. Abuse that I've given you, Mom? The verbal you abuse that you, you did to me and hold me for 10 years and manipulate me and use... use How dare you, Mom? How, How dare, dare you? you? How dare you when I have killed myself to make sure you get the help you need for our family? Sure, yeah. How dare you? you? Mom, abused abused don't talk to me. For 10 years. Don't. And held that over my Stop. head. Because what you've done to our family. Don't you dare say that I don't deserve to hold something like this, Mom. I have carried all of this since I was six and seven. Oh, no so, wonder so, I'm so, mad. Yes, I am mad at you, Mom. So then you lied when you went to, when you said you went to church camp and that you forgave me. I forgive you, Mom. I do not blame you. But don't dare say, I don't love you. Don't you dare. Because I am here on the Dr. Phil show to make sure you get the help you need so you can live and be healthy. Don't look at other people, Mom. This is about us. Did you hear what he just said? Don't be looking at other people. Oh look at God. me. I'm your daughter. I can't. You're, that's not my daughter. That's yeah, this not, is a this, mom. That is not this the Sharana that I raised, no. You didn't raise me! I did, you mom, didn't you have been gone for a long time. Don't you dare say you have been there. You have been there sometimes when you are lucid. You can't even talk straight right now. You should be looking at your daughter saying, wow, she's that upset. She's that hurt. Let me fix it. But you're not. This and for some reason, you you're looking at her. My, my daughter. She I, I is would not never her. do. I, if Lily came to me, I would never her. do this Mom, to you. Stop. No. I have to say we're not talking You need anymore. to sit down and listen no. to your daughter. This is your chance to get this, a, to get a grip on your chance. life. You and if you, 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 listen, you need this to sit down and listen to your daughter. By me. You Mom. need to sit down and listen to your daughter. Do not reject her in this moment Please. where she is telling you, you what she her. is feeling. <clears throat> you need to hear her. If you walk off this stage, our relationship is done. You've done it to me so many times, Shariah. How many times have you walked out of... Do you remember walking out of my life? When Do you I... remember moving out with some man? Do you remember that? Do you remember having sex with someone else other than your husband and getting pregnant? And leaving your kids? Do you remember that? Don't look for dad for sympathy. I need my husband here.
So let's bring him out next. Without me, she can't function during the day. My family's way of life is fractured. I feel robbed of the mother of my children and the wife that I married. And later, you can get your life back. Life and ruining my whole family. This woman is addicted to being sick. My sickness is very real, and I know that my husband can validate that because he sees me on the toilet for hours at a time and has seen me hit the shower door and knocked out on the floor. He's witnessed it all. He's the one that can tell everyone how sick I am because he goes to my appointments with me. What reason would he have to lie? Owen's wife, Shamita, has cheated on him. She says due to her untreated bipolar disorder where the affair actually resulted in an abortion. Now, he is stuck by her through 70 diagnoses, constant doctor's appointments and medications where she sleeps all day and then is up all night. Take a look. Shamita's sicknesses and behaviors has affected my life in the sense that it requires a lot of my time. Without me, she can't function during the day. I believe it's a very selfish thing for Shamita to not allow me the time to be there for my kids. I do feel resentful for the fact that I can't have more friends. Her family members don't understand the degree of pain that she goes through. My family's way of life is fractured. I feel robbed of the mother of my children and the wife that I married. Do you see how dad has to take care of you? How everyone's taking care of you? How you're loving this? How on, this, on that videotape showing you're better and you're so lively, but on this stage you can be? How I'm, you're so drained no, from medication? Stop yelling at me. I'm or so I'm... mad, Mom. Do you not see how mad I am? That's every day. This is not every day, Dad. Yes, Don't it even. It is every day. Do you when see me every day? When you are in her presence, and I'm talking about in the past, this is the behavior that goes on. Okay, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry if you come out in the middle of all this, but thank you for being here and, and thank you for supporting your wife as, as I know you do. The, the position that I've asked her to consider is whether or not she is coping with, dealing with, reacting to legitimate physiological anomalies mm -hmm. in such a way that is crippling her mentally and emotionally and robbing her of her life. Right. Of course, what she's going through, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it has consumed her life. Hypochondriasis, which is now called somatic symptom disorder, um, is not just about imagined illnesses. It's al also about exaggerated illnesses. Mm -hmm. It's about overreacting to illness. It's about letting it define you and consume you. You, in my opinion, have, been, have become consumed by it because if you go through, you've got over 70 diagnoses there. A vast majority of them have a huge stress component to them. They're brought on by stress or made worse by stress. Uh, they're triggered by stress, exacerbated by stress. And why? Because the stress is not being dealt with. You have had trauma in your life. And in my opinion, you've never dealt with it. You didn't deal with it psychologically. You dealt with it somatically. You dealt with it physically. So the stress still bubbles up, bubbles up, bubbles up. And okay, let's just find another way to express it. A lot of what's going on here is a stress conversion into a somatic expression. That's what's going on. And anybody that just keeps telling her, oh, yes, I know you're sick, I know you're sick, I know you're sick, you, you might as well be poisoning her. You might as well be poisoning her. She needs to face the truth and the reality and not be enabled to continue to hide behind illness and disease. Or not, I could be wrong. 
You're I'm good. not, but I could be. So you would advise me to stop taking my blood thinners and possibly have another pulmonary embolism? Oh, Nita, that's not what he's saying. No, 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 that, no. She asked me the question. <laughs> I'm not a ventriloquist. <laughs> After everything I just said, your response spoke volumes. What do you think about her response after everything I just said? She's thinking medically after everything you said. She just set up a paper tiger so she could tear it down. You, you see my point? Yes. They retreat to that thing that is real. You do have physical problems. They are manageable. They are not life-consuming. They do not require you to be over-medicated to a zombie-like state and stay in a room for 20 hours a day eating out of a Hello Kitty microwave. <laughs> That's the truth of it. You can get your life back. You can get your life back. I don't want my life back, really, because I, okay. don't, I don't want my daughter. Then that explains why you're doing what you're doing. You don't want your life back because you don't want to face some of the choices and decisions you've made. Let's just add to this. Up next, Shamita has two sons, 22-year-old Sebastian and 16-year-old Sage. We're going to find out why Sebastian says he never had a childhood and wiped his hands of dealing with his sick mother when he turned 18, and why Sage says he is the only one who knows what it's really like for his mother and that people need to understand her. We'll be right back. walking into my house, the blinds are always shut, everything was dark, it was really depressing. Her life is consumed by a doctor's medication and sleeping. I would kiss her every morning because you never know if your mom's not going to be there. One of the reasons I stopped playing football was to have more time with my mom. You never know when she'll be gone. Shamita and Olin uh, not only have their daughter Sharia. Uh, but they also have two sons, 22-year-old Sebastian and 16-year-old Sage. Now, these two boys have two very different points of view regarding their mother and living with her illness. Take a look. I've been to my mom's appointments. I see things other family members don't see. Her life is consumed by a doctor's medication and sleeping. I would make sure that she takes her medication. I would kiss her every morning because you never know if your mom's not going to be there. One of the reasons I stopped playing football was to have more time with my mom. You never know when she'll be gone. Walking into my house, blinds are always shut. Everything was dark. It was really depressing. I just felt really helpless. Like I couldn't do anything. I'm a very strong person. It makes me feel good to help my mom out. I didn't want to be in a negative environment. My childhood was negative. I just decided to move out and wanted to make a change for the better. I'm more caring about my family. I never get tired of it. My mom definitely needs more help than what she's getting right now. Well, Sebastian could not be here today, but Sage is here today. Sage, th thank you for being here. You've been watching the show up till now, correct? Yes, sir. And um, I just explained what I think's going on. What do you think's going on? You're with her every day. Um, I think she has a lot of problems, of course, but uh, I just think... Uh, I might be the youngest, but I've also been through it the longest, you know. She only got it 10 years ago, and I've lived through it the longest, so I, I know it better than anybody here. Uh, I'm the one taking care of her. Sage, you shouldn't be dealing with these things. You're 16, and you said you've been dealing with this for 10 years. These well, are things you shouldn't be going through I might not. A child. I, you should I be living life as a child. I probably shouldn't be dealing with them, but I have to. I have to grow up a lot faster than I had to. Well, but. Sage, let me tell you that as a father of two sons, um, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the way that you are devoted to your mother and, and take care of her, and God bless you. God bless you for doing that. I, I have two rules that I try to always follow with kids, and I'm sorry you are a kid, even though you're big as a house. Um, yeah. And I'm sure the football coach just beat his head against the wall when you stop playing football yeah. to take care of your mother. I'm sure he's in 
bad depression. <laughs> I, uh, excuse me, Dr. Phil. I did not want him to quit his co football career. But, but my two rules with kids are, number one, you never ask children to deal with adult issues. And... Um, <laughs> And number two, you, and number two you, you never hold children responsible for issues and matters over which they have no control. And you've been there for your mother. You, you had to learn how to give her shots at 13. You're there when she falls out of bed or off the toilet or whatever. You've had to pick her up and help her and do those things. And you're very blessed to have a son that cares for you and, and wants to do those things. He's going to be a firefighter, uh, that's why. And, and it is certainly not up to you to make a distinction between what you're doing that helps her and what you're doing that maybe sabotages her or actually enables her in some way. That's not your decision. That's not something for you to decide. And you just have to follow your heart and follow your heart and do what you think is right. What I will tell you from an objective standpoint, in in my view, your your mother needs less focus and attention on her illness rather than more. I would a hell of a lot rather see you strapping on a helmet than giving your mother a shot uh, because you need to be you. Did you hear what Shamita said all of you a few minutes ago when I said you can get your life back? And you said, I don't want my life back. Not if I'm ruining my whole family. The way they feel about me, and the way they ambushed me and humiliated me on television, the way my daughter just spoke to me. You should be thanking this woman here for caring enough about you to reach out and get you some help. You should be thanking your daughter to care enough to come here to fight for your return to health. You're, you think he hadn't got somewhere else to be? He's on the Dr. Phil show, for God's sakes. He would, he, he would a whole lot rather be off doing what he does. But he's here. These people care about you. She, my daughter just sounded like she cared about me, the way she spoke in that tone. Without question. Absolutely without question. What I heard from her was a passionate fight for her mother's life. A passionate wake-up call to her mother. That's what I heard. Most of the time, she tells me she hates me, so I'm... I have never once said I hated you. When I was six years old, of course, a little six-year-old doesn't know what's going on. But to this day, do I hate you? No. I love my mom, and that is why I am sitting in this chair, sitting next to Dr. Phil. That is why I'm here, to make sure you get the help you need, that our family gets the help that we need. We're going to take a break here, and we're going to find out what Shamita's parents have to say about this. They've been watching this whole time, and we're going to hear what they have to say. Shamita is in pain. You're seeing somebody just kind of disintegrating in front of you. She's not enjoying that. She's got three great children. They're fantastic. And she's not enjoying them. Does she bring these illnesses on herself just to get attention? My greatest fear is that she would take her own life. I do fear that if she doesn't get some help, I will be one of those mothers that will bury their child. I can't imagine what it would be like. Am I going to be one of those mothers? Well, that was Bob and Chandra, parents of 43-year-old Shamita, who has been diagnosed with bipolar, OCD, autoimmune disease, pulmonary embolism, lupus, and about 74 other disorders over the past 10 years. Now, Dana and Shamita's parents, uh, Chandra and Bob, 
uh, wanted to be here, but Bob's Bell's palsy f flared up, and so he was not able to travel, but they're able to join us via Polycom. So uh, thank you so much, uh, both of you, for being here. Thank you, Dr. Phil, for having uh, my family on the show. And I have looked at your show for the past four years. I think it's been a tremendous job. Thank and you. I want to say to my daughter, she made a, she made a no one their dislikes what's going on. They all love you. I'm so proud of my family to do what they're doing right now. And do you believe what we're saying to your daughter that while she clearly has some physical challenges that she is reacting to and adapting to these things in a way that is crippling her? Yes, and, and Dr. Phil, I was a uh, Disappoint, uh, disappointed when I saw a friend of hers in the audience that was there. That really got me baffled. And Dana asked, why is she there? That's an enabler. Uh-huh. Uh, exactly. And Chandra, what do you have to say to Shamita at this point? I just want her to know how much you know, we love her how much we want her to be helped. Dr. Phil, I think God is using you to, to help our family, and I thank you for that. It's horrible to see my family, in, even right now on stage, where there's so much pain and hurt. Yet we also feel like failures. Because after we tried to get her help. We did all we knew physically to do, but we're not doctors. Well, and we didn't know where else to turn. Well, you talked to the rest, now you're talking to the best. What can I say? <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I, I really do. I, I really do have help here. I, I've and I've got the best resources in the country uh, that can be brought to bear on this. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very clear. I, one thing I've always said is I don't think people should ever come talk to me and leave guessing where I stand or what I think. And I take that very seriously. I think when people write letters do these long interviews, get on airplanes, fly across the United States, come here and sit down and talk to me. They deserve clarity, and they deserve for me to have done my homework and know what I'm saying. And I'm going to put a button on all of this when we come back. Shemita, let, let me ask you something. What if these people didn't come here to humiliate and abandon you? What if they came here because they felt like my mother is lost in the dark, my sister is lost in the dark, my daughter is lost in the dark, my wife is lost in the dark, and we are going to find her and bring her back? What if that's what's going on instead of these people coming here to hurt and humiliate you? That's what I thought it was originally, and I was very happy about that. Well, is it possible that you just are seeing this through if they're here to help you? Um, I mean, the, I just think that I, I looked ridiculous on the taping, and it just makes me look like a crazy person. I mean, I don't know. And then my daughter being so brash, I mean, it just didn't, it doesn't sound like it's coming from a, a sincere place. I mean, If you can get your life back, 
If you can get out of that room 15 or 20 hours a day, if you can get back to jogging around a track, going to movies, hanging out with friends, doing things with your children, would you rather do that or would you rather be a patient? I would love to do that. I mean, that's what I'm really surprised. Sage is the only one that at least said I try. I'm really shocked that Sebastian, he told me that he supported me on the tape. <clears throat> Dr. Phil, I think I can help with her on that because she's told me within the last two to three years, she says, I hate what this has done to us. I hate what this has done to our family. I hate having to go to another doctor's appointment. So I genuinely believe those are true ways that she feels she just doesn't know how to get there. But you know, Owen, people on heroin tell me they hate being addicted. True. But they will step over their mother's dead body to get to the next fix. Absolutely. They'll tell you they hate it. They hate being a slave to it, but they can't stop. Right. And this woman is addicted to being sick. This woman is addicted to doctors. She's addicted to the attention that comes from being a patient. I'm telling you, and you, you can think, you can shake your head and shake me off if you want to, but you have gotten to the point that you've lost control of this, and she doesn't have insight to it. We've got to get that back. We've got to get her back where she sees this objectively. And I'll give you an example. Would, would, would you agree that she talks about and focuses on this Oh, absolutely. If that's, if that's what you're living, of course. Absolutely. Well, but it's what you're living if you're... It's, it's like a dog chasing its tail. Right. Y you say, well, of course she focuses on it because it's what she's living. Mm -hmm. And it's what she's living because she's focused on it. Mm -hmm. And she's focused on it because it's what she's living. It's what she's living because she's focused on it. This goes around and around and around, but pretty soon you start to circle the drain and it goes down. You've got to break out of that cycle. Right. Does that mean she's not sick? Of course, but there are people that are way sicker than her that go on with their lives and do what they're doing, and that's what we have to get to here. That has to be the goal. Old sayings get to be old sayings because they're profound. You're not going to get a hit if you're not swinging. And the more times at bat, the more chance you've got to get a hit. She's not going to get rewarded by life because she's not engaging in it. She's so over-medicated. Oh, my God, this woman's a zombie. Yes. She's a zombie. She doesn't even know it. Why does she know it? Because she's over-medicated. She doesn't get it. We've got to get her some coping skills to deal with this and get her back into her life. Yes. We want. And is there any part of you that wants to do that? I would love to not have to take any medicine. But I'm, I'm not over-medicated. I've slept five hours in three days. Okay. Shamita, I am going to offer you help and resources with professionals that I trust in terms of psychopharmacology, neurology, all of these things in cooperation with and in collaboration with existing doctors for genuine disorders. And this is going to involve potentially creative care in Malibu, the, the P&P clinic in, in Dallas, Texas, which is, in my opinion, the foremost diagnostic center uh, in the country today that looks at all look the patient, not just systems, and, and try to get focused on what truly needs to happen. And if I make those resources available to you, are you willing to participate? Of course. You're willing to participate? Of course. I, I, would love, I want to live again. I want to feel better. Okay. I don't know why they're portraying me that I don't. But Nobody's portraying you anyway. You're just so used to being the victim that you're, you're putting on a victim hat. She's picking on you. She's picking on Well, she did pick on you. But, uh, but she did it for the right reasons. Uh, I, I'm just saying, you will take the help, right? And, and let me tell you, the day's going to come where you're going to thank that woman for writing me a letter. The day's going to come where you're going to thank her for writing me a letter. I did thank her. 
and, and you're going to thank her. You're going to thank your daughter for caring enough to come here on national television and put it all out there because she cares enough about you. You're going to thank all of these people for being here for I you. I thank my family all the time. My parents can attest that I love all my family. And I, <laughs> I, well, they love you enough to not let you lose yourself. All right, we're going to stop for now, but we are going to follow up with this very deserving family. We're going to let you know what happens, and if she will listen and comply with what we are going to recommend, I think you're going to see a very different version of Shamita, Shamita 2.0, the next time you see her. <laughs> a special thanks to Creative Care in Malibu uh, for offering to help. Really a wonderful facility. Um, and also to the PNP Clinic in Dallas, Texas, uh, the foremost diagnostic center in the country, in my opinion, because they're two of the first resources we're going to embrace. We'll see you next time.